Hello chess family, it's me National Master Jesse James and it's time for another installment of How to Play the London System. In this one we're going to be seeing a very cool or positional idea where Kamsky is going to be playing a nice game against uh, Maxim Dudley of the bishop b5 plan. Basically it's a positional plan to control the e5 square, which as we know as London players is very important. The e5 square is where we can base a lot of kingside attacks, which actually does happen in this game. But in this one we actually end up winning with a very nice good knight versus bad bishop and a nice end game. Well, let's go ahead and take a look. We start off with d4, d5, knight f3, c5, pawn to c3, pawn to e6, bishop to f4. Here we go. The London system setup is complete. Knight c6, c3, bishop to d6, one of the best ways to play against this. And, well, what do you play here as white? A true London player would not think too long here. They're going to go ahead and play the bishop back to g3. Here, you don't want to leave it and you don't want to just trade it. So here the idea is that if they do take, well, you're going to go ahead and take back, as it does happen in this game, and you get the open h file here. So you do get a little something out of this trade. Um, all right, here we go. Queen to d6 got played, trying to control this good square of e5. Knight b to d2, knight to f6, and here we get to play the idea of bishop to b5, and this is the whole plan of the position. Here we want to remove this knight from controlling this e5 square. And, well... Once you get the knight there, it's going to, you're hoping to get the knight versus the bishop. As you can see, the pawns are on the same color as this bishop. So although this bishop may get to something like a6, which I believe we do see in the game, these are not critical squares. Rather, the knight in the center is just that octopus. It's really just controlling all parts of the game over here. And, well, white is just able to keep building off this small little advantage. I say small, but whenever you fill this side on the board, it does not feel small at all. So here we go. Black went ahead and just played the simple bishop d7. Bishop takes c6, knight, uh, uh, bishop takes on c6, and here knight to e5. And then we see that this knight is just a monster of the game. Here, white, uh, black went ahead and castled. Pawn to g4, very nice move here. Here, because, of course, we do have the open h file here, we're going to go ahead and try to do a kingside attack. Simple idea now is to play g5 and then get this queen over to h5. And, well, if this does happen, this is going to be pretty much a win in the book here for white. And, uh, well, black goes ahead and tries to fight back. He knows how strong this knight is, so he goes ahead and plays. Knight to d7. No need to fear. Queen c2. A nice little idea. Threatening checkmate over here. And black plays a mistake move of pawn to f5. Why is this a mistake? Well, here you want to keep this pawn ready to kick this knight at some point. And, uh, well... Control this e5 square, as we know, is very important. But after f5 was played here, well, there's going to be no hope for you now. Here, it does not take Kamsky long. I mean, Kamsky was uh, one of the best players. I mean, he did play for the World Chess Championship. He lost to Karpov, I believe. So, yeah, def definitely one of the best players. It did not take him long to figure out the idea. Here, what do you do? To win this e5 square, all you simply do is knight takes, bishop takes, and now knight to f3. Again, this is going to be good knight versus bad bishop. For the rest of the game, black is just struggling to try and activate this bishop. Of course, we notice we cannot take on g4 over here as simple queen takes h7 to open up the diagonal again. So this is tactically defended. Here c takes on d4, another not too good move. Um, at this point, it is very easy for white to go ahead and play. E takes on d4 here. Remember, we don't want to take back with the c pawn, although this does make the pawn chain um, equal to this one over here. It opens up the queen side, and black can create the counterplay that they want. Remember, white most of the time is going to try to keep the center closed and attack on the king side. Vice versa, black tries to open up the center and also attack on the queen side to stop the king side threats. All right, e takes on d4. Queen f4 here, a nice little threat against the pawn. But simple chess, knight to e5 again. We have this monster knight right here. Free temple off the bishop, defending on g4, and again, you can't take because h7 pawn over here. Black tries to play to the good square of bishop b5, which technically is its best square here, but, well, it's not going to help out too much in this game. a4, bishop back to a6, pawn g3, and here, this was exactly what white was hoping for, queen to e4 check. This endgame is very, very good for white. Uh, most of the time they say, well, not most of the time they say, the rule is... Uh, knight and rook do not work as well as rook and bishop. With that being said, they didn't know about this knight. This is a very good knight and versus the bad bishop over here. So white's very happy to trade. Queen takes, pawn takes. Although the although this pawn structure pawn structure is a little messed up here, white is able to play the correct strategy and just break through over here. What is the best route for you to do here? That's my question to you. Should you attack on the king side? Should you try to attack in the center? Or maybe should we go ahead and attack on the queen side? This is just planning here in chess. What is your best way to play here? Feel free to push pause if you want to.
All right, which way do you go? Here, it's very simple. You're going to want to go kingside. You got this open H file here. You got these pawns over here. Let's go ahead and do that. So simple chess. We want to bring the king up to E3. Why? Well, the king is going to be very good here in the center, holding down the fort, uh, defending F2. And we also want to allow the rooks to be linked up here. With that being said, we can't just go king to D2. Rook takes on F2. Check is just a horrendous blunder. So what do you play first? Well, now that we know we want to go kingside tack, we can go ahead and play rook to h2. A simple move, allowing king d2 and allowing the rooks to double up. Rook over to c8, no problem. King to d2. Pawn to g5, uh, a move I can't really uh, say I like too much here, but I can definitely understand. Here, now we have this new weakness of g5. And, of course, we're not going to run after that pawn right away as rook takes f2 is going to get played. All right, double the rooks over here. Now we have... Two weak pawns, actually three over here, that are going to become targets. And this is going to be too much for, for black. Rook c7 defending. King to e3. Now the king's on its best square. Again, you can see this bishop, although very strong, controlling lots of squares, you can just make them obsolete or not important, right? All right. Let's go ahead and add and keep the attack going. Here, black went ahead and played pawn to b6. And now let's work on those weaknesses. Rook h6. Here we have the backwards e pawn over here. So a little pressure starts to get put on it. Bishop back to c8, trying to figure out something to do. But, well, unfortunately, the best life for this bishop is really just to be defending this e6 pawn, at least for now. And here, I like the move here by white. Pawn to f4. You could keep it a little bit more solid and just keep making threats here. Maybe something like rook h5, threatening g5. I mean, rooks g7 would get played either way. But again, you keep kind of nodding, nodding here, uh, or needing, and you're really just trying to find something, and hopefully uh, black makes a mistake. Because they are, they are on the defense, there's no need to um, make these kind of uh, pawn moves that, well, you know, once you make a pawn move, you can't take back. These are very committal moves here. With that being said, I'm going to trust the world champion on this one. F4, pawn takes, knight takes on F3, and now we see the G5 pawn is the target. Rook over to G7, rook to H5, bishop to D7, and knight takes on g5 here. It looks like this might have been a mistake because, wait a second, the idea of bishop to d7 was to play bishop to e8. Well, white to move. What would you play to get out of this sticky situation? Here it did not take long. Here white found the beautiful move of, well, it's a nice combination of rook takes on h7 here. Okay, don't we just take the knight? You do, but now you're going to be losing your rook. Rook check, king to g7, rook check, king g6. Rook takes f8, king takes, and rook takes on e8. At this point, it is now just a winning position as far as the pawn count goes, especially because, well, this king is very inactive, and our rook is going to be very active over here. The rook took on g4, king f3 to defend. Now we see that the e6 pawn is really weak. Rook to e4, rook to e7 check, king to g6, rook takes on a7, e5, and here the simple move, rook to e7. At this point, you're going to be either be losing the pawn or trading off the rooks. And, well, this king upon endgame is going to be a very easy one to win. Um, here, black played rook e1, but then just resigned as well. Again, rook takes e5 is just going to get played here. And, uh, I mean, after rook takes e5, I guess if rook's on rook to b1, you could just play the rook to e2 here. Well, guys, hope you enjoyed this one. This was a very good demonstration about the good knight versus the bad bishop or the bishop to b5 plan. What are we trying to do here? All we're trying to do is trade off the bishop for the knight so we can get full control over the c5. Now, this one works out particularly well whenever they move that f pawn. Remember, don't move the f pawn. Uh, well, I'm just kidding. Moving the f pawn is, is a good idea. But in this situation, you just gave away the e5 square. And a, a true grandmaster like Kamsky does not take long. Knight takes, bishop takes, knight f3. He just takes this great square for his own knight. And the rest of it is just going to be good technique here. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that. We'll see you in the next video.